Welcome back to The Rundown. And often spy novels and Hollywood films bring us incredible stories that seem far too far-fetched for actual real life. And sometimes real life is much more unbelievable than the movies. This is one of those stories. It's the final part of our exclusive preview of journalist Ronen Bergman's new book, Rise and Kill First, out today. New details of how the Jewish state recruited a Nazi spy. 1962. Israel is 14 years into statehood. The pursuit of Nazi war criminals is still underway. Its biggest success, the capture of infamous war criminal Adolf Eichmann, has been carried out. But while Israel was still on the hunt for the living ghosts of its past, the focus would soon turn to new threats in the present. They were chasing Nazis. There were some Israelis from Mossad at that time who thought that they are Nazis for SS was trying to rebuild the, the Third Reich, and they, of course, they didn't find them because there, were there weren't any. The only place where people who used to work for the Wehrmacht did create a viable danger to the national security of Israel happened without the Mossad knowing a thing. Everybody in Israel, Israel was, were, were shocked. That shock happened on one morning in the summer of 1962, when Egyptian President Gamal Abdel Nasser unveiled long-range surface-to-surface missiles capable of reaching all of Israel. To obtain the technology, Nasser had gone far outside Egypt's borders. They found the nucleus of know-how and experience in Germany with many scientists engineers, technicians who used to work in Pinamunda, that's in the Baltic Sea, uh, the secret facility run by the Gestapo, the Wehrmacht secret plan to build rockets. The secret weapon that Hitler thought, mistakenly, good for all of us, that he's going to win the war with. Now, these, these scientists um, didn't really have what to do after the war. Some of them were uh, recruited by American intelligence and then came back to Germany, but basically, you know, stained with being part of a Gestapo operation, they had very little that they could do in, in, in Germany. And they offered their services to Nasser. Now, just imagine the combination. Nasser, who is equated to Hitler, German scientists who used to work for the original Hitler, are now building uh, weapons of mass destruction for Nasser. They are testing it, they are parading it in Cairo, and Nasser is saying these missiles can destroy any target south of Beirut. Israel's first answer to the problem was to target the German mines behind the missiles. Yitzhak Shamir, then head of the Mossad's assassination unit, led the effort. The plan was to cripple the, the project by killing the scientists. So he deploys in Europe, himself with everybody he could bring from the Mossad, basically trying to trace down the scientists or the technicians, the engineers, and either kidnap them or kill them all. When it became clear the assassinations had stopped short of thwarting Egypt's missile program, the Mossad turned to a shocking solution. The new chief of the Mossad, Mayor Amit, says we need to recalculate our way and based firstly on reliable intelligence, really understanding what the scientists are doing. And in order to do that, we need to have someone inside that group. That someone inside would end up being a once senior officer of the Nazi regime, now recruited by a senior officer in the Israeli Mossad. His name is Avraham Achituv. He is a German born who lost all of his family in the Holocaust. He runs the Bonn delegation of the Mossad. And he suggests to recruit a person who is very close to the scientists, who found shelter after the war in Spain because he fled the Nuremberg trial. He is accused of severe war crimes. He used to be known as the most dangerous person in Europe during the war by British intelligence. He was the Hitler favorite operation uh, officer for special operation, Otto Skorzeny. And Achituv says, if we recruit him, through him, we'll get the intelligence. And the chief of the Mossad, Mayor Amit, says to, uh, to that idea, you will recruit this auto when I'll grow up hair in the palm of my hand. But they did it. The Mossad getting to him through his wife, the secret operation dubbed Vitamin C. The Mossad could offer Otto Skorzeny something that no one else could. Life without fear. And through a net of connections, the 
one Mossad guy was operative of German Bull was able to recruit Otto Skorzeny's wife, the Countess Elsa von Filkenstein, a nephew of the uh, Treasury Secretary for Hitler. And she, in her turn, convinced Otto Skorzeny to meet with the Mossad. Now, the Mossad didn't pretend to be anything else. They didn't pretend, in, as in other cases, to recruit with false flag. They said, we are come from the Israeli intelligence, and we need your help. And Skorzeny was very practical. He said, I'm able to help you, and I will, in return for these four conditions. A new Austrian passport, a letter of immunity from the Prime Minister of Israel, uh, money, and to be taken out of the Simon Wiesenthal list. Simon Wiesenthal refused to take him off his Nazi hit list, but Otto Skorzeny accepted the Mossad's terms. All the details of his recruitment carried out by Achituv, documented in a classified Mossad report on the operation, revealed now for the first time. And then you have the report of Avraham Achituv about that dramatic minute when he of German born, who lost all of his, um, all of family, his family, uh, family in the Holocaust. And they say, I knew his past. But I allow myself to put on writing two moments that shocked me and gave me again the, emphasize the, the nature of the person in front of me. The first, we sat in the coffee, the coffee shop, and Skorteni was looking for an address in this phone book to give it to me. Suddenly, he took the monocle out of his pocket and stuck it into his left uh, uh, eye. And his look at that time, uh, in addition to the sizes of his body, uh, Skorteni was huge. The scar and his aggressive eyes gave him the image of a true, perfect Nazi. And here happened the unbelievable. The chief of special operation for Hitler became the most valuable asset the Mossad recruited at that time and was able to solve the most important national threat that Israel faced during the 60s. Years later, in 1975, Skorzeny died of cancer in Spain. At his funeral, the Nazi salute, given openly. A real piece of history, stranger than fiction.